Okay, so we're just gonna wait a couple more minutes. And um, as we're waiting, I am here. I don't know whether, see this guy? Can you see what I'm, as we're waiting for people to come in, I thought maybe you would wanna see my slug. You see his antenna? Yeah, he's a big guy. So I got him, um, I got him this morning. We'll be going to be talking about him a little bit, um, a little bit more. Um, but okay, so here he's crawling around on a piece of. I put him on some construction paper so you'd be able to see him a little bit. But he's a he's kind of a he's a leopard slug. He's really big. I just weighed him. He almost weighs a half a pound. That's, that's quite a bit. That's a big fat slug. He's a big fat slug. See how he's stretching out? He's like all the way over on the other side. And now here he is on this side. Yeah, he's, um, so as I'm talking, um, and we haven't started the program yet, but he was crawling off my desk. It's like, oh no. You have to be in the program. You can't crawl off my desk and then I wouldn't be able to find you. See how long he is? Wow, okay. So um, so as I, as I do a little gymnastics with my slug friend here, I'm gonna welcome you to a Duke Farms program. And Duke Farms is a um, facility in Hillsborough, New Jersey. It has 2,470 acres of property and we're all about conservation and preservation and ecological research and taking care of all of our wildlife and making sure that we have a clean green environment. So we do a lot of classes um, in person for all sorts of ages. And now we have done a lot of programs that are done virtually. So that's why we're here with you today. And the first part of the program is uh, that we are going to do a little bit of uh, a talk about our animal friends. And then we're gonna go live to Duke Farms so we're going to um, we're going to be live to Duke Farms, and we're going to be talking to some people who are out in the field. So, whoops, he just turned around on the construction paper. Can you see him? So, back part is over here, and his head is right here. So, hopefully, you were able to see that. So, I was just going to make sure that uh, the people who are out. Duke Farms are all okay because I'm just wondering whether I think we just had a little bit of a technology glitch. There you are. Hello. You're back. You're back. Okay, great. Okay. We are back. We are okay. good. Okay, so I'm going to start the PowerPoint. I was just showing everybody um, my slug that was almost oh. my desk. So look at know, him. But yeah, he now he's decided to be. Um, you know, very active and before he's he was huge. just, yeah, he is huge. So I'm so glad I figured, you know, I was going to talk about him later, but since um, he became active and kind of like, I guess he knows that the camera's on and he's like, well, hey, you know, now I'm going to do all these gymnastics, but you can see him close up. Oh and, yeah. Um, yeah. So look how big he is. Yeah, yeah. Almost, let me show, let me almost, show Caitlin. So that Caitlin can see. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you see hi, how Caitlin. big that is? <laughs> so yeah. Can you see him? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. She, yeah. Oh, so so I, I know that the program's a little out of sync, but you know, this is when he decided to do his slug performance. So, you know, I really wanted to seize the moment. Um, before the camera was on, he was just rolled up in a little ball and now he's like all over the place. So anyway, okay, I'm going to put him now that everybody's seen him, 
Um, I'm going to put him, whoops, I'm going to put him back um, in his little container. Uh, and hopefully he will not crawl all over my desk. So there we go. So um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Kate Riley. I'm the manager of education at Duke Farms. And we talked a little bit about Duke Farms and our spy series is really about learning something new or kind of revisiting something that you already know. And then also taking the opportunity to then see what we do at Duke Farms and then that you can do in your own backyard or in a local green space. And we have done a number of these uh, programs once a month and you'll be seeing them on Eventbrite. So thank you for joining us. And, you know, one of the things that we like to do is to be outside and discover new things. And today we have Vaughn Scully with us, who is part of our education team, a wonderful educator. And we also have Caitlin DeCara, who's a watershed ambassador, and you'll be meeting him a little bit later in the program. I just wanted to show you a couple of things on our slideshow before we get started. And of course, this is I Spy Something Slimy. So in October, on our distance learning portal, a part of our website, we have a lot of uh, articles about different kinds of creepy crawlies and all these wonderful things that happen um, that we can discover in October. So it's a great theme for us. And we thought slimy, just so many really cool, mucky, oozy, gooey, slimy critters that live uh, around Duke Farms and also probably where you're living also. So why are these organisms, why are these animals so squishy? Why are they squishy, squishy? And it's because they are invertebrates. So that means that they do not have bones. So when you feel your arms and you feel your fingers and you feel your back, what you're feeling is your skeleton, right? So that's your skeletal structure that keeps us able to you know, sit up and stand up and walk and move our arms and legs and, and all of that. But invertebrates do not have bones. So a lot of them are squishy because they don't have the same hard structure that we have. And so an invertebrate, there's many, many, many different kinds. So, you know, some worms are, inverte uh, worms are invertebrates, uh, sea urchins, different kinds of snails and so forth. Some insects have an exoskeleton, right? So some invertebrates have these exoskeletons like uh, the lady, what we commonly call a ladybug. So it's kind of hard on the outside, but then the slug, like the slug that you just saw at the beginning of the program, he's pretty squishy, right? So he's not hard on the outside at all. So we're gonna be talking about some of those animals today. Those animals that we're talking about have a very, very important job. And they eat dead or decaying material. So if a leaf falls off onto the ground and it lays on the ground, it starts to decompose, it starts to break down. Some of these squishy organisms, like snails and slugs that you see the pictures of, they will eat dead and decaying material. So if uh, another slug dies, then some slugs will eat that. Some snails will eat that matter. Sometimes there's a dead worm. And, you know, so they will, they will eat those dead things also. So I'm just admitting a couple more people in here. So while I'm talking. So they have a very important job because these detritivores eat dead and decaying material. So they will crawl around usually on the ground in all sorts of different places and they will eat these small pieces of plant and animal matter. So, you know, that may sound pretty yucky, but as you'll see, they help us because can you imagine what it would be if every leaf that fell off the ground did not get broken down or if any little tiny worm or other kind of animal just was dead and it just stayed there forever. We'd be up to our eyeballs in dead leaves and dead animals also. So these animals like slugs and certain types of flies like crane flies, 
They're the cleanup crew. They're gonna clean things up. They're gonna help break down the leaves. And then the other thing is that they get eaten by other organisms. So they're a very important part of a food chain or a food web where the slug may eat the leaves and then a bird or something may eat the slug, but we'll talk about why slugs don't get eaten very much either. But anyway, they are part of this food web. So if you were to take all of these, these okay, oozy kind of slimy organisms out of the food web, there'd be all these dead and decaying plants and animals piling up, piling up, piling up so high. And who would want that? So they are very, very important little critters. And that's why they need to be protected as well. They are in danger because sometimes we use chemicals or, or, or businesses use a lot of chemicals and those chemicals get into the water or they get on the ground. And then the slugs or the snails or all these little creepy crawly animals go across the ground. And if there's salt or if there's chemicals like pesticides or herbicides or other kinds of chemicals that are toxic, because so much of their bodies are exposed, they could really get damaged by that. So we have to be very, very careful about the type of chemicals that we use, the cleaning products that we use, you know, our cars uh, oil could get on the roadway and so forth. So, you know, we have to be careful. The best we can do is to try to use cleansers and things that are not so harmful. So we want to kind of cut down on the types of chemicals that we use that mom and dad may use for cleaning and so forth. And just be as careful as you can because the water is very, very important to them because their bodies are mostly water and they're on the ground so much. So that's why it's so important. One of the, uh, the great things about the program, we think, is that you're going to be getting an email. And in that email, you'll be receiving many materials that you can do at home. You can download them and you can print them out. So you're going to be getting a whole, um, a whole packet of articles. One is about this, um, this organism that I'm not even gonna tell you about yet because they are so super cool. You're gonna be hearing about them uh, just in a few minutes. And then also you'll be getting a slug activity, which is kind of a game that you can play. And it's about when those slugs walk, they have this very slimy trail. One thing that I didn't mention when I had my slug out, oh, I think he crawled off my desk. Anyway, the slug that I introduced you to in the beginning of the program, a lot of organisms, a lot of animals do not want to eat that slug. And it's not because he's got, you know, I mean, he's a gorgeous slug, right? But a lot of organisms won't eat him because he has this terrible uh, taste. And a lot of it is because the mucus that he emits through his body is kind of protecting him and it's got a yucky taste. So, you know, some animals may try to eat him and go, Bleh. you know, that's a terrible taste. I don't want to eat that. And then the slug also is very slimy on the bottom because as he crawls along, he slimes his way around. So if you ever see this leopard slug is um, kind of, they're more active in the night, but if you ever see slugs, you can probably trace where they've been because they leave this really cool uh, slimy trail. So you can kind of like, be on the lookout for those slimy trails and see if you can find some slugs at the end of that trail. Sometimes the slugs, even when they're not there, leave that trail and it's almost like glitter or glistening. It's really kind of cool to look for. So that's one of the things in your own backyard or in an urban green space that maybe you can check it out and see whether you could um, you can find some slugs. So with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen and we're gonna go and meet Von Scully from our education team and also Caitlin DeCara for a very special uh, presentation. And we're gonna find out what they do, where they are and, and what they've discovered. They've been out outside all morning. Let's see what they've found. 
So Vaughn, I'm oh. going to start sharing my screen. All right. And I, Hello. Um, yeah, we've got a great class today. This looks like a fantastic class. So I'm going to stop sharing my video and go to you. Hello, everybody. Hi. All right. Yeah. So thank you, Kate. So my name is Vaughn. I'm one of the educators here. And here's my colleague. Oh, here, let me turn it around so you can see her because the sun is there. So here's Caitlin. Can you say hi, Caitlin? Hi. Can everybody hear Caitlin? Can you wave and let me know that you can hear Caitlin? Awesome, I see some waving, perfect. Thank you so much, guys. All right, so before we go see what Caitlin is doing in the stream, I'm gonna show you, I also have some slugs here that I found at Duke and they are super cool, but they're totally different from the one that Kate had. Look at that, you see him on the, on the lid there look how cool that is he's a totally different color and he's a lot smaller too i don't know exactly what type of slug this is we have so many types of slugs here in new jersey look at that he's yellow and slimy and awesome and his friend is here in my little terrarium look at this lovely little terrarium that i made look at him yeah see how cool he looks so i've got a couple slugs here and kate told you a lot about slugs already Caitlin is over in the water and I'm going to go over there and she's going to talk to you about what it is that she's doing. So let me turn this camera around. All right, Hello. Caitlin. Hello, everyone. So again, my name is Caitlin. I am live from Duke Ruts, which is the stream that runs through Duke Farm. Vaughn and I have been out all morning sampling some really awesome bugs for you guys to look at. So how we did that is using this net. It's called a D-net because it forms a D. It's very aptly named. So we use this net and we stick it in the water facing upstream so that the water flows into the net and we kick up the sediment that's stuck on the bottom of the stream and we pick it up and we kick it up and then we scoop up what we've caught. And so there's all of this stuff that gets caught in the bottom of the net all down here. And this is a mesh net. So all the water can go through, but all of our little bug friends get stuck in the net. So then we dump it into this bucket. And from after we dump it into this bucket, we take little containers and scoop the bucket and then sort through with pipettes and spoons. We want to be very gentle with our bug friends. So we want to be nice and kind to them because they're really important for keeping the stream nice and clean. So we have our handy dandy little magnifying glasses. Vaughn has one and I have one as well in purple, which is one of my favorite colors. And so we then take our spoons and our pipettes and we scoop up from our bucket of samples and we put our little friends into this ice cube tray so that we can easily see how they're doing and hang out with them for a little bit. So Vaughn is going to use this awesome little microscope thing that he clips to his phone so that we can get a really good look at all the stuff that we found in Duke's truck at Duke Farms this morning. So Vaughn, you can go ahead and all right. put your microscope on. There we go. Let's see. Can you guys see me all right? Yep. There we go. All right. I'm going to put this on here. Let me make sure I can line it up right. Oh, Beautiful. boy. Wow. Look at that. We can see you very well Ooh, now. You can see me pretty well, huh? Yeah. yeah? Okay, cool. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So, Vaughn's going to take a chance to look at each of these little guys that we found. So, who are we going to look at first, Caitlin? Who are we going to meet first? Let's meet the snails. Oh, the snail. So, we found not one, but two snails here in Duke Farm this morning. Whoa. So, the snails are super, super cool. Like the slugs, they have those little antenna on the front, um, and they can feel around on the bottom of the stream and uh, scoop up all the stuff that's on the rocks. Um, so this guy's been, uh, he doesn't really swim. He's been crawling around in there. And he's um, moving. Yeah, he's been having a great time. Um, and he has a little friend in there as well who's a little bit smaller. Like the slugs, snails can come in all shapes and sizes. The snail is squishy, and so to protect them, they have a shell that um, the big thing is just the little slugs that are crawling around on the bottom of the stream. So this guy is, again, super, super important scraping on the rocks and getting all of that stuff clean on the bottom of our stream. So hey, hey Vaughn and Caitlin. 
Yeah. Can um so Caitlin's a little difficult to hear at times. Ah, here. Let's um how yeah. about we switch here? Yeah, we'll switch microphones here. Let's try yeah. that. All right. Kate, can you guys hear me a little bit better now? That's so much better. Thank you. Oh, uh, awesome. So did you guys hear what I said about the snail or do you want me to repeat it? Just go over it a little bit again because that is a great snail. I'm very excited about that snail. Isn't it so cool? It's so cool. So yeah, so again, our snail friends, um, they come in all shapes and sizes. So this is the one that we found this morning. So they, again, because they're so squishy, they need something to help them out to keep them protected a little bit. So they have their shell on their back that they um, crawl around with. Um, so they are they have a nice little home while they're living on the bottom of the stream. And then the snail, our bigger snail friend, also has a little tiny snail friend who's floating towards the top of our little ice cube tray where we keep our beautiful bugs that we found in Duke's Brook. Um, so we're going to move now to the flatworm, um, who is, what, what do you need on? Okay, yeah, we're having a little problems with the sun, but so the flatworm is currently resting, but he is that little dude in the corner. Um, so flatworms are super, super cool. They also are super, super squishy. And they also, like the snail, eat the stuff that's on the bottom of the stream. So it's very important that we have these guys around so that they can keep our streams happy and healthy. If he starts wiggling around again, we'll make sure that we get a good shot of him. Absolutely. Yeah. So then we're going to move to the aquatic worm. Whoa. So this dude is super cool you have worms in the soil and you also have worms that live in streams it's so cool we found a big one this morning so these guys crawl around in the sediment on the bottom of streams um looking for nice squishy places to live and these guys are can get so big these guys also come in all shapes and sizes so the worms are super cool we found a couple worms this morning but this guy is yeah, definitely the biggest look at guy. him and, and there's another guy, one. And he even looks a little bit different, doesn't he, Caitlin? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We love aquatic worms. Mm -hmm. They're so Squishies. cool. So then we're going to now show my absolute favorite stream bug of all time, the caddisfly. Caddisflies are so cool. There he is in the bottom corner. So caddisflies are super, super cool because they are super, super squishy. But like the snail, our snail friend had a shell that he carried on his back while he was squirming around on the bottom. But this caddisfly looks a little unprotected. He looks a little, you know, like he's, he looks a little squishy. Yeah, he looks a little squishy. So you can see him wiggling around in there. Um, so caddisflies are super cool because they actually build their homes on the bottom of the stream. So we actually went out and we found some caddisfly houses for you guys to see. Where are our rocks? Where'd they get moved? Are they still over there? Yes, they are over there. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna look at some caddisfly houses. Yeah, so caddisflies basically have this sticky, sticky stuff that can come from, that they spin, and they actually make these little structures on the rocks in the bottom. So here is a caddisfly house right here. So there are two different types of caddisflies. There's the case building caddisfly, which is what makes these little things here. So this is a caddisfly house. These caddisflies will spin these houses and make these little structures. And what's really cool about caddisflies is that different types and species of caddisflies use different materials on the bottom of the stream. So some caddisflies use rocks and some caddisflies use sticks. And if you give a caddisfly precious jewels like gold, they will make a house out of gold. They are so crafty and so cool. So 100% my favorite of all of the bugs that we find in the stream. And then there are also net spinning caddisflies and they, you see how sticky and gooky that looks? So these types of caddisflies will spin nets to catch things in the water column. So all of that stuff, all those little tiny, tiny particles that are rushing in the stream, these guys build these nets to catch it so that they have some yummy meals during their days as stream bugs. So 
again, I love Catasflies. Their houses come in all shapes and sizes, and they are very important, again, for keeping our stream nice and clean. And it's also important because if a caddisfly is present, we know that the stream is healthy because caddisflies really, really don't like pollution. So it's really important that we do all of these stream assessments and check out all of the different types of bugs that are in our stream. Because if we get a lot of different bugs, that means that our stream is very healthy because a lot of different things want to live in it. And there's a lot of different habitats and a lot of different happy places for these bugs to live. So the reason that we go out and we look for our friends is to make sure that their home is happy and healthy like they are. So yeah, those are all of our squishy bugs that we found. So I hope that you guys enjoyed looking at them as much as we enjoyed looking for them in the stream. Uh, Vaughn, do you have anything to add about our squishy friends? Well, do you guys think that you might be able to find these if you go into a stream somewhere? Do you think they live near you? What do you think? Yes? No? I think they might. Mm -hmm. I have a stream that runs in the back of my house, and sometimes I will go out and pick up rocks and look for, again, I love caddisflies, but all sorts of bugs. And these guys won't hurt you. They're very, very small and very squishy, and they are happy eating the stuff on the rocks. So you could just definitely find them and don't have to worry about um, how, like, you know, them pinching your fingers or anything, but it is very important that we treat them kindly because of what Kate and Vaughn have said about how important they are to our stream. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Kate, I think that's everything for today. That's everything that we had planned. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And I just want to show you again my leopard slug because some people at the beginning of the program may not have seen this leopard slug, but remember the one that Vaughn just showed us that was like a little tiny leopard slug in a container. And now look at this leopard slug. If you, were, if you saw him at the beginning of the program, he was really long and really active, but see now he was taking a little nap or something and they kind of roll up in a ball. So they can also, See how he sticks to my paper? I don't know whether I can turn it upside down, but look at him. He's like, ooh, I'm stuck to the paper because they have the ability to crawl up leaves and crawl up trees and branches and they can stick. Now, I don't know whether I can turn them all the way over. Do you think I should try turning them over? Okay, right. let me see. I'm going to hold my hand out because I don't want them to get hurt. Ready? Like when you flip an ice cream cone over. There he Whoa. Whoa. Oh, so slimy. Upside down. Look at that. So, and that's because they're adapted. Their adaptations allow him to crawl up leaves and crawl up branches. And here he is, you want to, should I turn him over one more time for the final act? Ready? Oh, there's his antenna. You can see him sticking out. Ready? I'm going to turn him over and see. Oh my gosh. Wow. And he can be upside down. So, wow. all right. So that's a leopard slug. And we are so happy that you joined us for our program. And we hope that maybe you go outside today or sometime and you follow a slime trail and you can find another slug or maybe you and, a, and a, an adult can kind of take a look in a stream or a brook near you. And we are so happy that you were here with us and we hope that you sign in again. This is I Spy, and we're going to have another one next month. So maybe we'll see you soon. All right. Bye, Caitlin. Bye, Vaughn. See everybody. Bye. Bye everybody. Thanks for Bye everyone. Us. And we're going to be emailing you. So look at your email. We've got lots of things that we're sending you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Happy Saturday.